Hi, I'm Kristen Oviedo and this is Kelvin's Law. When you're trying to transmit electricity over long distances, there are limitations to the size of the wire or the conductor that you're going to use because there are two things that will limit you both high and low with what size you can choose. So this first one, the cost of interest and depreciation on the line that you've chosen to use is going to be directly proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire. And what that means is you take the cross-sectional area and multiply it by some constant, we call it K1 here, and then that's gonna be how much money you're losing yearly or whatever time you like um, in interest, depreciation, and the cost, the initial cost of the investment in the wire. So then initially you might think, okay, well, just make the wire smaller then, and then this will be smaller. But then this quantity here is going to limit you as well on the lower end, because the energy loss in that conductor is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire. So then if you make the wire too small, and then you divide this constant by the area, then this is gonna get really big and the total amount of money that you would lose on the conductor over time is gonna be the sum of these two. So basically I've just taken this quantity and this quantity and added them to find the total money lost over time with your conductor. So now that you have this number, you're gonna use some calculus to figure out the most efficient cross-sectional area of the conductor because again, you can't go bit too big or too small. So the full derivation is kind of out of our scope right now, but essentially to find the most efficient value of A, you're going to take the derivative of this quantity here and set it equal to zero. And when you do that, sorry, the derivative with respect to A, and when you do that, you're going to end up with square root of your second k value divided by your first k value. So in principle, it seems like it would be really simple to just look up these quantities and divide them and take the square root and then figure out a. But in reality, when you're actually trying to transmit power over these uh, long distances with conductors, there are a lot of other factors that come into play other than these two constants that will ultimately affect the efficiency of your conductor. So again, if this were an idealized situation, Kelvin's law would state that the most efficient conductor size is one for which this equals this. But again, we can't say that Kelvin's law is strictly accurate in all situations because in real life, we have all of those other influencing factors that will throw it off. So I'm Kristen Oviedo, and that is Kelvin's law.